Hey there, Jets fans. This is Matt Barbado from New York Jet Fuel coming at you with a bit of shocking. I would say this is one of the, the most shocking moments I can remember in recent Jets history. Muhammad Wilkerson has signed a five-year deal worth $85 million total, $37 million guaranteed, and he will receive $54 million in the first three years. And this comes, this announcement came about 30 minutes after Friday's 4 p.m. Eastern deadline. Uh, this deadline was for anybody who was slapped with the franchise tag to reach a long-term agreement. When the clock struck 4 o'clock, it appeared there was no deal in place. 30 minutes later, a tweet revealed uh, a tweet from the Jets revealed that, in fact, there was a long-term agreement reached between the New York Jets and Muhammad Wilkerson. And this is an absolute stunner. Uh, nobody really saw this happen or coming. Um, and, you know, it just sort of happened under wraps. Nobody really knew about it, and we, we tweeted about it at New York Jet Fuel. Follow us on Twitter. You know, we tweeted about it. There was radio silence coming from both camps leading up to this moment. And then, boom, all of a sudden, that Muhammad Wilkerson is a Jet for the next five years. I'm a huge advocate of the move. I've written about it. Uh, I'm joined by Max Marcilla. Max, Give me your if you can if you can come up with one word to describe what has happened in the past, I'll say hour. Give it to me right now. Well, I would say buzzer beater, but you can't even call it a buzzer beater because it came thirty minutes after the buzzer had already been sounded. It it, it it's unprecedented, it's shocking, it's it's a smart move. I mean, use any one of those moves. Bizarre, shocking, I would say smart. I think it came out of nowhere because there have been frustrations, and we've talked about, and it's been documented, that Muhammad Wilkerson had been frustrated with the Jets. He said in an interview with the New York Post a couple, I, I think it was about a month ago in June, he said he was frustrated with the Jets. He said that he felt like they didn't want him, and this has been going on for months, ever since the Jets slapped the tag on him the first time. And there had been a lot of frustration from Wilkerson and not a lot of discussions, or so we had heard. And he didn't show up to mini camp, and everyone was really expecting. All right, no deal. He might hold out for training camp, but he'll he'll play under the tag. And all of a sudden, thirty minutes after the deadline, like I said, not even a buzzer beater. Bam, five year deal. And you know, I I like the deal. And you and I, Matt, we both backed Wilkerson, and we've said he not only deserves the money, or, or sorry, not only deserves an extension, but he deserves the money. We've analyzed the deal that the Eagles gave Fletcher Cox. And we've analyzed the deal that J.J. Watt has gotten. And, of course, I mean, that's J.J. Watt. But Muhammad Wilkerson, we both agreed, was deserving of this money. And I think to lock him up for five years was very smart. Just in terms of the player that Wilkerson is, it was a smart move. That's not even including the risk that the Jets face with Sheldon Richardson and Leonard Williams. So it's seventeen million annually if you look at it from the five years, $85 million. Uh, technically... It'll be about $18 million, it looks like, over the first three years. So Muhammad Wilkerson's going to be getting paid more than J.J. Watt and Fletcher Cox uh, the next five years. He's going to be making more money than both of those guys who are both deemed as preeminent defensive linemen. I want to read the quote that Wilkerson told the New York Post um, way back when, it seems like, maybe a month ago. Uh, Do I feel like they want me back? As of right now, no. I don't feel like they want me. And that's just part of the quote. But, I mean, that's where these negotiations were not very long ago. And it appeared that this was going to be the case throughout the season. And it seemed like Muhammad Wilkerson and the Jets were both content, or maybe not Wilkerson, but the Jets seemed content with letting Wilkerson play on the franchise tag. He would have made a little bit more than $15 million, uh, for the 2016 season. And, I mean, this is uh, – it's a shocker, and I, I think uh, I think it's the best move the Jets could have made. I've said it so many times. I've written probably three or four columns about this. You know, y- superstars don't come around every every so often, obviously, in the NFL. You, in, in the, you see it. You see it by based on who's winning championships. Superstar players don't just fall into your lap at, what, pick 28 of the, uh, of the draft. Um he was a late first round pick. He's been a really, really steady player. He's not exactly flashy. He's not a guy who jumps out to you as a guy who's going to get 12 and a half sacks a year. He got 12 sacks last year, but he's not, he's a, he's a true three, four defensive end. He can play really stout against the run. And uh, he really took his pass rushing to a next level this season. There are some concerns over the broken leg. 
and that's probably my biggest con concern regarding Wilkerson. But he's just too good of a talent. You already have this preeminent defensive end who, who could be a franchise cornerstone for years to come. And, uh, you, you know, yes, Sheldon Richardson's talented, Leonard Williams is talented, but both of them haven't exactly proven it. And I know their careers are, mu are much shorter, but you have this commodity right now. You have this guy. Why not lock him up? And that's my that's been my plea the entire offseason, and the Jets finally did it. They're taking, in my opinion, the best talent on that defense. Yes, I think he's more talented than Revis. I think he's more talented than Sheldon Richardson. And I think the Jets took the best talent on their defense, and they made sure that he stayed a Jet. I don't think you can be mad at that move. And you, we talk all the time. In football, it's a big risk-reward business. And we talk about that in the draft. Are you going to take a flyer in the seventh round? Are you going to take a guy with character issues in the first? It's a big risk-reward business. For the Jets, this was a high-reward, low-risk investment in Wilkerson as opposed to if they invested all that money into Sheldon Richardson because Richardson, not only did he have a bit of a down year last year, but he also has the off-the-field issues that even though he might have overcome them, they're still documented. Leonard Williams, also a tremendous player, he's only played 16 games. You can't give that kind of money to someone you're not sure about. I think the Jets were sure about Wilkerson. I didn't think they were until about an hour ago when they announced it, but I think it's a smart move for McCadden. And of course, when you're putting that much money in play, it's a little bit of a risk, but I think it was a risk worth taking for McCagnon and the Jets. And I'd really love to hear what Mike McCagnon says about how what changed since even two weeks ago. What what exactly changed where unless the Jets were, you know, working underground and keeping this completely concealed from the media, what changed and, and and caused this to happen in literally the final minutes before this deadline. That's what I'm really curious about. Because it really seemed like unless the Jets are doing a great job of, you know, hiding info and you know, keeping things, you know, underground, it really seemed like this wasn't gonna happen. And it seemed like Muhammad Wilkerson was pretty much out the door after this season. So I'd really like to hear from McGagnon on that front. Uh let's wrap this up with sort of a glimpse at what this means for the Jets Outside of Muhammad Wilkerson, uh, it, it, is the ball now in Sheldon Richardson's court, or is Leonard Williams still sort of a, um, you know, not a sure bet either? I mean, you could say, okay, now it's Richardson's time to prove himself, but then what does that mean for Williams? I mean, you could say maybe Williams is more talented than Sheldon Richardson. So what do you think this means for the other two guys on this star-studded Jets defensive line? I think it means a lot for Leonard Williams, especially because – I think that Williams, you know, being in the second year of his rookie contract, the Jets would rather Williams play better than Richardson because that he still has a couple years on that rookie contract, which we know is some of the best value in football. Like Odell Beckham Jr. is, is barely getting paid anything compared to some of the other top wide receivers. The rookie contract and getting a superstar at that rookie contract is every team's just dream. And if Leonard Williams could prove himself in year number two, I don't think the Jets would have a problem with uh, getting rid of Sheldon Richardson, or, or even if he was under the franchise tag for a year, I don't think the Jets would have a problem with seeing Richardson walk out the door with the promise of Wilkerson and a proven guy in Leonard Williams. Of course, Williams hasn't proven himself yet, so that's why it's a big year for him in 2017. But I'll tell you what, Matt, this defensive line with Richardson, Williams, and Wilkerson, along with McClendon, and I think, I think that could be very good. I know they Nasty. lost Damon Harrison, who I think is the best defensive tackle in football, but that defensive line is tremendous. And I think that it'll, you know, you look at the bigger picture, it could help Marcus Williams, who will likely be the Jets' second cornerback. He'll have a big responsibility, and it's going to be a lot easier on him if the quarterback has a, a second to throw. So, I think it's a big year for the defensive line for all of them, but Muhammad Wilkerson, congratulations. It was well-earned. He played tremendous football last year. Uh, I, I think it was a smart move for the Jets, and I think Wilkerson deserved it. Well, having a defensive line, even if it's for only a season or two, as good as this one, will make everybody's life easier. And I think now we're, you know, watching this defense with, with Mo Wilkerson, Sheldon Richardson, Leonard Williams, Darren Lee, David Harris, uh, Lorenzo Malden. I mean, this defense could be really dynamic in the front seven, and it could give a lot of different versatile looks. They've got a lot of different pieces. You can play a lot of different places. 
I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to fit all these guys on the field at once. You probably can't do it, but you're going to be able to get them on the field enough to make an impact. And it, now all the Jets have to do is figure out the quarterback situation, and I'd say they'd be at least a playoff contender. Um, I know the schedule is hard this year, um, and I'm still not overly optimistic that the defense will be enough to carry it. But, yeah, I mean, this is this is an unbelievable move by the Jets. I, I think nobody saw this coming. And I, I do think it really puts some pressure on Sheldon Richardson. And I think this puts the Jets – it buys the Jets more time in terms of evaluation. It also gives them an advantage because now they can sort of uh, see where they lie with this defensive line. And perhaps a guy like Sheldon Richardson could be trade bait in a year. Um, and you can maybe get another first-round pick to address another need, maybe the quarterback position. Because, you know – now that Wilkerson's gotten paid, these two guys are going to be motivated. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent in players exceed their value in the contract year. So this gives the Jets a lot of options. I think it's the best move for the franchise because you want to have options in the NFL. You don't want to just be limited to, well, we have a good player and that's about it. And, you know, we can't really – we're not flexible. We can't do a lot of things. Todd Bowles is a guy who clearly wants flexibility – on his front seven, and uh, the Jets get that, and they also get it from a front office perspective, where they can maybe dangle a guy out for his trade bait. Um, and yeah, this is just this is an unbelievable move. It's been what I've wanted the entire since I think last off season. I've been vouching for this, um, and now it's time to see this team come together in training camp in two weeks, and it, it should be a really really interesting training camp to see what Bulls does with all of these pieces. And uh, obviously, we will keep you covered on all of that. So, Max, any final thoughts before we wrap this video up here? Yeah, well, I'll be there at training camp, so make sure to follow. I'll be tweeting from Jet Fuel at New York Jet Fuel. Make sure to follow there. I'll be tweeting from there. I'll be tweeting from my own account a little bit, maybe a picture or two, at mmarcilla98. But most importantly, check out the site, www.nyjetfuel.com. If you haven't checked it out, about a couple weeks ago, we revamped the site. It looks beautiful, if I do say so myself. Of course, I am the designer, so I'm a little bit biased, but I think it looks good. So check out the website. You'll also get the content, of course, if you go there. But one other, one other thing I'd like to say is I get really nervous recording these videos, Matt, because if we've learned anything today from uh, Mike McCagnan, it's that anything can come as a surprise. Anything can come at a moment's notice. And I'm really scared that Ryan Fitzpatrick just signed. Of course, I'm kidding. No, you never no, know yeah. who's going to sign. But, yeah, well, that has not happened. Well, um, to keep you updated. Anything can happen. It's the NFL. It's a year-round business. So make sure to follow us. We'll keep you updated. On yeah, that. well, that's the next storyline, obviously. I mean, with this Wilkerson situation pretty much put to bed, now it's all about Fitzpatrick, and now it's all about if this team gets a quarterback that's competent, can they get to the playoffs in 2016? And – um now, now the next two weeks are going to be all about fit. So we will keep you covered on that. Of course, look for us at training camp. Max, our other writer, Adam Zelonka, will be there as well. Uh, but that's a couple weeks away. We will keep you busy until then on www.nyjetfield.com. Uh, quick reminder, follow us on Twitter, at New York Jet Fuel, at Real Matt Barbado, and at, as Max mentioned, at M Marcilla with two L's, 98. This has been a Jet Fuel video.